In this video, I'll show you how tool geometries affect your V-carve inlays. I'll show you what happens when you configure bits as tapered ball nose, engraving, and V-bits, and how it affects your V-carve inlays. With this knowledge, you'll be able to understand why it's so difficult to properly set the tool parameters with the new V-carve inlay toolpath. Come with me and we'll explore tool geometries together. Regardless of what way your bit is configured, it's important to know that your plug and pocket must fit precisely to make a good inlay. How we configure our bit directly affects how Vectric will interpret the tool geometries and apply them to our tool paths. As I'll demonstrate, all tool types are not created equally when it comes to V-carve inlays. Okay, so in our Vectric V-carve software, I'm going to start with a very simple engraving or a V-carve tool paths and we're going to configure a single tapered ball nose bit as a tapered ball nose, an engraving bit, and a v-carve bit and show you how those tool geometries are affected. Uh, I did start off with just a simple vector, mirrored it with a border so that we can do our plug side and I want you to pay attention when I bring up the tool database for this demonstration I am using three of the exact or using the exact same bit configured three different ways I've got the Amana 46280 bit as it's originally configured as a tapered ball nose bit which is a 6.2 degree tapered ball nose bit with a uh, 132nd inch tip radius or 164th inch diameter. I've also configured this same tool as an engraving bit and you'll note that the flat diameter is listed and this is actually where it really affects our tool geometry is that when you have your flat diameter and your uh, tip radius those are accounted for with these kind of tool paths. In a V-bit as you see here, there are no configurations for defining any kind of variance in this tip at all. So it's expected that it's going to be a tip that meets on either side and whatever degree the bit happens to be. Most traditional V-bits come in 90 degree, 60 degree, and occasionally you can find 45 degree or 30 degree that are configured as V-bits. In this case, we're configuring our Amana bit with the 12.4, which is basically the 6.2 half angle multiplied by 2. But all other parameters are remaining the same. So for our first tool path, I'm going to create a V-carve inlay tool path with a start depth of 0 and a flat depth of 6 millimeters. And we are going to use the Amana 46280 tool bit as it's originally intended as a tapered ball nose bit. We'll go ahead and select that. And we'll go ahead and we will call the tool path. We will call this uh, TBN underscore pocket. And we will calculate that out. I've got a 1 8 inch upcut as the clearance tool, but as we're going to see that on the pocket side of things, we're not going to need that tool path, so we'll wind up deleting it. And there's our error telling us that the tool won't fit. We can say OK, that's fine. And there we have our clearance tool and our pocket can delete the empty clearance tool and let's go ahead and run the preview on our pocket toolpath and click on close on that for our second toolpath we're going to make our uh, 
plug tool path so we need to select our mirrored vector plus our border and again we're going to do a v-carve tool path we're going to do a start depth of 5.0 millimeters and 2.0 for a flat depth i use this because this is what i've typically used for this bit in the past and i know this parameter works when configured as a tapered ball nose bit so we are going to call this tbn underscore plug and we'll calculate that out and this time it will use the 1 8 inch bit so we're, we're going to go ahead and simulate these tool paths so you can see what's going on with these and as we see we now have our pocket and our plug We'll go ahead and export these tool paths and run them on the CNC. Okay, so we've got our pocket and our plug cut, and we'll fit them together. And you'll see that we wind up having a nice tight fit. We'll cut that in half and show you the depth of the uh, glue gap at the end. where we'll go ahead and reset our tool previews and can switch to the 2D view or stay on the 3D view, your choice. But I'm gonna use the 2D view and we're gonna create our second tool path. Again, a standard V-carve. Zero as a start depth, six as a flat depth in millimeters. And this time we are going to use our Amana 46280 configured as an engraving bit. And we will call this tool path ENG underscore pocket. And we'll go ahead and calculate that out. And again, we're told we don't need our extra tool path. So we'll go ahead and clear that out. And we'll delete that particular tool path. And now we'll create our plug tool path. So we'll highlight our inverted vector and border. And again, we're set as an engraving, but this time we're gonna go five millimeters for the start depth and two millimeters for the flat depth. Uh, not gonna change any other parameters in this whatsoever. So this one we're gonna call our ENG underscore plug and calculate that out. And again, this time there will be a plug tool path. And highlight all those and close and for the sake of brevity I'll go ahead and generate my last set of tool paths this time it's going to be configured as a v-bit and all other parameters will be the same. Zero for the start depth, 
six millimeters for the flat depth. And we'll call this one bbit underscore pocket. Calculate that out. And we can go ahead and get rid of that clearance tool toolpath because it won't be needed. Now we can do our plug tool path. And this again will be five millimeters for the start depth and two millimeters for your flat depth. We'll call this one bbit underscore plug. Calculate those out. We'll export those down and run them on the CNC, and then we'll meet you back here. So this time we've got the pocket and the plug cut out for an engraving tool path. Fit them together and show you that again we have a nice tight fit. And again we'll cut this in half at the end of the video and show you what it looks like for a glue gap. And finally configured as a v-bit and as we'll see in this we have an extremely loose plug i mean it is just bottoming out in the bottom of this it's wobbly this would be a horrible inlay and we'll cut that in half and show you just how it bottoms out here at the end So cutting our different uh, plug and pocket combinations in half, we're going to start with our V-bit configured bit. And what you'll see when this gets cut is that the plug will fall out of the pocket. It is so incredibly loose it's not funny. When it comes into focus here, you see there's way too much gap on both sides of the plug and in the bottom it bottoms out. Next we'll show you the inlay plug with the engraving tool path configured for your tapered bond bit. And what you'll see here is that we have a nice firm inlay with about a two millimeter glue gap. So that's almost a perfect glue gap for this inlay.
And finally, we'll cut our tapered ball nose bit natively configured V bit. And what we'll see here is the same result that we got with the engraving tool bit. Because those tool, tool paths are able to account for the actual tip radius and diameter, we get a cleaner cut. And that's a usable inlay as well. Now that we've looked at the end result of configuring our bit as three different types of bits, we can begin to see how the geometry as interpreted by VCarve can affect the outcome of our inlays. This video links to how we can understand or how we can use this understanding of geometries to determine the inlay parameters using the VCarve inlay toolpath. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again in the future videos. Please remember to like and subscribe and if you found this video interesting, here are some other videos I think you'll enjoy.